The human brain, the fundamental of life, the storage of our greatest memories, the causation of every motion, thought, and breath we take. The mastermind behind all of the racism in this world. The neuroscience behind racism. Like I said, the human brain is the fundamental of life. So if we're going to fix racism, we have to attack the problem at its core. The human brain naturally puts things into categories. For instance, a cat and a shoe. Two completely random things, right? Well, it only appears that way because your brain has already put them into two different groups, something that is animate and something that is not. The medial prefrontal cortex is activated during social categorization and defines which groups we place ourselves into. We encounter racist thoughts due to the neural pathway seen in implicit bias. An implicit bias is a combination of unconscious attitudes and beliefs that might affect the way we view or treat another person. Neuroscientists believe that implicit biases are formed as a result of categorization. These groups make it easy to make judgments against those who are not in the same in-group we place ourselves in. A study was conducted on Americans which showed increased activation in the anterior cingulate cortex and the inferior frontal cortex when watching pain placed upon someone of their same race. This portion of the brain is activated when feeling empathetic for others. But when shown a video of someone of a different race facing that same exact pain, this portion of the brain was far less illuminating. This concludes that people feel far less empathy for those they don't associate themselves with. So how do we fix this? The truth of the matter is that we all make prejudgments. The amygdala is responsible for initiating an automatic response, also known as the fight or flight response. When seeing someone of a different in-group, the amygdala may enable feelings of anger or aggression. Luckily, the fast amygdala response will also enable the prefrontal cortex. This will rationally assess the situation and calm down the initial response. This will help act against the racial prejudices implanted in our brain. However, many lack a proper functioning prefrontal cortex and cognitive mechanisms, allowing for these racial biases to take over them. Fascinatingly enough, the brain has something called plasticity. Plasticity is ultimately the ability to be rewired as a response to new information and new experiences. Cognitive exercises and focusing on eliminating those biases can allow for new synaptic connections and new stimuli to take over those old racist beliefs. It takes focus and engagement and a willingness to change, and it may seem almost impossible to get everyone on board. But when asking the question, is it possible to end racism, here's an answer from science. Absolutely.